I major. We are live here at the Pantip Esports Arena in Bangkok. And here with me on this desk, drum roll, D2. Finally, I get to cast with the amazing D2. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, how are you? I'm, I'm doing all right. Uh, yeah, this is our first time casting together. Mm -hmm. And we have a really good match uh, coming up for our first cast together. It's going to be a player from Hong Kong by the name of Yi Cho Ryu Hun, which I'm trying my best every single time to say it. I think I'm the only one trying to say it. You, you, you're probably the only one that says it right. Right. I'm just Ma gonna maybe. I haven't asked any of the Taiwanese players or Chinese uh -oh. speaking players here, but We're hopefully. most likely wrong then. Maybe. But uh, he's going to be going off against Tom60229, a player I actually played against at BlizzCon 2014. And he has gone on to actually uh, have a bit of a better playing career than I. <laughs> winning, winning two separate LAN tournaments and getting to the finals of a third, that being Assembly Onog 2015 and the Celestial Invitational. This year, he doesn't have any you know, results on record, but he's been working on hard behind the scenes and he actually has put up enough points to already qualify for the last call for Asia Pacific. So he actually doesn't even need the points from this tournament. He's just doing it for, for uh, pride and some money, I suppose. That is quite a history of, of Tom, and you know everything about Tom, it seems. Well, I mean, I did play him in 2014, as we take a look at our schedule for today. So we're going to be going into the round, is this the round of 16 upper bracket? I believe it is. E Round of 32. 32. It says right now, round of 32 right. upper bracket. Okay, reading is hard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> anyway, but yeah, I have been paying attention uh, to you know a lot of the a lot of the uh, you know pro matches ever since you know or just basically the entire time. A big Hearthstone fan, obviously. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, having played top once, it's really cool to see a guy like that, especially from the Asia Pacific region, be able to you know win so many tournaments like that. But uh, yeah, we did. Okay, we have confirmation. This is the second part of the round of 32. But so you have to tell everybody, did you win against Tom or not back in 2014? I actually did win against <laughs> Tom. I actually Humble brag. Yeah, he did. <laughs> he lost in the first round. I, I got to the semifinals. Um, I kind of, uh, but uh, I guess I guess if I had it, you know, my way, I would have taken the, the land victories rather than, even though it was BlizzCon. But what can you do? Well, I'm actually really excited because we have two more Yog Druid decks. Uh, Tom has a Yog Druid, of course, and uh, Yi. Let's, well, let's call him Yi Cho. Yi Cho has a Yog Druid too. Yeah, he and does, what, absolutely. Um, no Yog Mage, though, unfortunately. Are there anything that's like very different about the, uh, their decks? Well, Yi Cho did bring a OTK Warrior, so this is the first time I'm yeah. seeing this. Yeah, well, very interesting. No in arcane giants. Typically, sometimes people have kind of mixed it up uh, with the pyromancer theme and gone for things like you know patron plus arcane giants. Sometimes they just have the arcane giants with the charge. Uh, but this is the old school, just worgen OTK warrior. We do have to mention actually we went on and on about Tom, but Icho, or who we're going to be calling that now, Icho is actually one of two players. You remember when I was a. Uh, at the beginning of the cast with TJ, we mentioned that GCT Turth and Icho were the only two players who can actually make use of the points here <laughs> and go to last call. And so if Icho actually wins this entire tournament and gets those 15 points, he will qualify. He will surpass the person who is currently in eighth place right now and go to the last call tournament. So this is a really important mm -hmm. tournament for Icho. Remember, Tom is already in that tournament. so. Icho wants what Tom has. This is a, going to be a great matchup then. We have yeah. the like top players that could you know, possibly make both play into the uh, last call. Yeah, these certainly if uh, Icho ends up going to the last call, that means these are two of the top players in all of Asia Pacific, uh, you know, going by the standings, obviously. That'd be good. Absolutely, and uh, just letting you know what the rest of the decks are. It's going to be Warrior, Shaman, Druid, and Rogue here for Tom, and Hunter, Rogue, Warrior, and Druid for Icho. And they actually have identical Rogue decks. We are taking a look at their decks earlier and... Questing Miracle. Yeah, yeah Questing. <laughs> it's going to Quest for uh, both players, actually. That's actually a good... Um, a lot of, that's the go-to Rogue Miracle Rogue now, the Questing one. Right, we did see actually Mana Addict. Yeah. Uh, version before, but looks like we have double warrior ban. No surprise there. Don't want to mm. deal with any sort of such nonsense. Even when it's OTK warrior, just go ahead and get rid of that so we don't have to deal with it. Looks like we have. Okay, so each of us going to be named Throne here. Uh, I was doing some. <laughs> we were going. We were doing some Google translating earlier, and uh, our player from Hong Kong. He actually 
It was just a bit bizarre coming out there, but looks like we have a uh, nice translation for us. Maybe he actually told the producers. Throne. But That's throne great. At least we know his name. We can call him Throne now. We can call him. We can certainly call him Throne. <laughs> Maybe call him by the name that's on the screen. Might confuse viewers otherwise. But yeah, that does leave the Hunter, the Rogue, and the Mage here for Throne. Uh, Mage, I think we have a mix-up in our decks, actually. Because he is not playing Mage according to... Wait, I didn't list. get. Yeah, I didn't get mage down. Maybe it might be. Maybe wrong. we have the wrong match. Maybe maybe Tom already beat each other in the next match. <laughs> that would be really cruel to us. Well, <laughs> well, let's see. Maybe he really did have a um, a mage, and like the list was just wrong on the spreadsheet. That would be awkward because <laughs> every single card would be wrong. <laughs> we'll have to see. But um, another thing about Tom, he's made a ton of earnings on Hearthstone. Right, winning lands can do that for you. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I had to say it. I had to say it. Yeah, there's just a lot. Of, it's like some people just make a lot of money. It's crazy. Yeah. Yeah, uh, but yeah, just going, you know, going over it once again. Won assembly. He won uh, Onog, and he actually he beat a lot of really good players in the tournaments as well. He, as well, he beat uh, Oskaka and Powder at assembly, and then he beat uh, Trump and Polento at uh, at Onog. This is a great player, and. Um, He's actually on a team called Yo Flash Wolves. I think it's Yo E Flash Wolves. Oh, sorry, Yo E. <laughs> it's a Taiwanese team. They are in uh, many esports. <laughs> so I'm so white. <laughs> Yo. Like, Yo Flash Wolves. <laughs> well, maybe that's what he what he says when he plays Feral Spirit. Like, Yo Flash Wolves. And just <laughs> plays it out onto the field. I actually noticed we are wearing the same shirts. Yeah. It's actually this is the shirt for this event. This is so the shirt for this event. You can't, we, you can't buy this. We're responsible anywhere. casters. We wore it. TJ and Maru are doing something weird and just wearing whatever they want. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, about... Um, we're going to call him Throne now. Throne. Throne's Hunter. I noticed it's... It reminded me of Amnesiac's Hunter. It's mm -hmm. more on the aggro side. Um, it has um, two Unleash the, the Hounds. It has two Argent Horse Riders. It has... Argent Squires, Abusive Sergeants, and um, actually there's no Wolves. That was like the only thing that was like missing. Because like Amnesiac runs Wolves. No Infested Wolves, yeah. Oh, no, no, no. Dire Wolves. Oh, oh, that's Alpha, what you meant. Alpha, sorry, yeah, sorry. I should have specified. Oh. Alpha Dire Wolves. Like no, normally in an aggro, though. Aggro Hunter. You're giving me wrong information. <laughs> I'm like, he didn't no. put Infested Wolves in this deck. What is no, he has Infested Wolves. Okay. But that, that so that's why I feel like it's like a mid, but it's more on the aggro, but it doesn't have dire wolves. So. Right. Well, well, the every hunter deck, other than maybe Yog and Lord or something like that, they're they're trying to kill you, right? There's no healing in the deck. They are they are the beatdown. Even when they're playing against you know something like Zoo, they eventually have to be able to kill the opponent. And so you know it makes sense to go for a bit more of a fast opening here. And we are going to be starting with game number one with Throne, going with that hunter that we mentioned. That is the one fiery bet in his deck. He's running five one jobs with the Argent Squire and Abuse Sergeant, like you mentioned. And Tom's going to lead off with that rogue here, which is again the same exact deck that uh, Throne has brought on his side. And this is an interesting matchup because for Throne, he'd be at a bit of a disadvantage if he was playing a standard mid-range hunter, but. Being able to just apply all that damage to the rogue means that I think he's uh, a bit on the favorite side here. So they say that if rogue doesn't start with the or have the coin, do you think they're at a disadvantage? Right. It certain. It, it depends, right? Uh, rogue obviously wants as many options as possible, since in the early game they are usually responding to the, what the opponent is doing. And they don't really have any early minions per se, especially if they're playing the Miracle variant. And so they're basically just trying to deal with their opponent. And coin helps immensely, as well as the ability to have just more, you know, options at your disposal. And you can actually just get the coin back with things like the Tomb Pillager. So, as you can see, Tom six zero two two nine just doesn't really have much to do here. And if he did have the coin, he'd be in a better spot. Right, I totally agree, because then he could coin out the SI agent, but in this case, he's going to do what most rogues do on turn two, which is just hero power. I mean, you don't want to sap He might the sap frog. Do you he, think so? He's thinking about it. It's <laughs> The thing is, if you hero power here, you're taking 10 damage from the frog because you have to base sync it. Because since your opponent used coin on the frog, you're expecting him to have another two drop. Tom doesn't know that Throne has actually ha gone with a plan of going for double one drop on turn 
too. It makes sense on the side of Throne because if he just plays the Fire Bat, it gets here powered down. And this is, sets him up for a very... As long as your opponent doesn't have exactly backstab, which by the way, Tom doesn't even want to play on turn two because he wants to, to pair it with SI7 Agent. So Throne is playing around Greed and he's yeah. playing around backstab just in general on the side of Tom 60229. So very heads up play here by Throne. And will Tom 60229 facing it? He is going to take 10 damage yeah. from this Toad and actually a bit more, he doesn't know yet, from the Abusive Sergeant. But right, yeah, you you were totally right with what you just said. Like, the reason why he played the frog was a really smart play. Tom now, uh, it's just unfortunate that Tom didn't have a backstab, so <laughs> he's right. going to be taking a lot of damage. So right here, we're going to see the fiery bat and then abusive sergeant. Tons of damage. Oh yeah, my goodness. Tom needs a fan off the top here, or I think he's already lost the game mm -hmm. and doesn't pick it up. Even, a, actually, a backstab would have been reasonable there as well, but he's going to be taking quite a bit of damage. And, yeah, it's mm -hmm. going to be the naked SI7 agent. Throwing is going to That's obviously good. get the spit off into the face. I'm actually curious. I think that Tom's, Tom could have maybe gone for the SI first, and then even if you give your your opponent you know, a value trade, you're still taking one less damage, which is uh, kind of key here. There are no Earthen Ring Farseers in the deck of Tom, so all of this damage is permanent. And Throne's just gonna go ahead and use his Eagle Horn Bow and push more damage to the face. He knows there's no answer. He knows there's no Phantom Knives. That would have been the play last turn here for Tom. Oh, there's it's the backstab. a bit too late, and you could totally see it on Tom's face. He, didn't, he doesn't like um, the kind of start yeah. that he had. And this time he is actually going to try to get the the uh, death rattle onto the SI7 agent here instead. And does hit it, so that is good, quote unquote, for Tom, but you know, how good is yet to be seen. I like the um, the animal companion here. Just gotta just play a minion and it, um, use your Throne is considering quick shot hero power, I'm pretty sure, because he wants to just play on curve. If you just hero power from here on out, it's very hard for Tom to actually race you but yeah that yep. is a huffer <laughs> yep. that is a great that's actually just what he needed i think he, if he just hits the face here the opponent goes on the seven he can just go quick shot hero power and then he and then tom is dead the next turn i don't think tom has three turn lethal in any universe <laughs> so i think throne can just go ahead and hit the face here that's true and yeah i think it, I, we can clearly see on tom's face like he knows he's lost this one maybe he's trying to remember if there was an earthring farce here i think he's trying to because they clearly don't have the deck, deck list yeah. in front of them. Maybe they just had to like study as quickly as possible. So he's maybe trying to remember if he if the opponent does have Earth Ring Farseer, as we have a bit of a production issue. <laughs> but uh, we're okay. Huffer is still on the board. I feel like um, with questing, don't they usually cut the Farseer? Right, right. So he's he's he might have been thinking about that, or maybe he was just you know deciding till the end there. He does hold on to the bow. There's no taunt in Tom's deck anyway, so he can always hit it whenever he wants. Uh, there is a possibility of picking up uh, an eagle horn bow at the top, but he has three, or excuse me, two turn lethal anyway. Does thrown, so it actually doesn't even matter if he if he top decks the bow. So many. Yeah, I mean, what would you do as Tom here? Just um, you give Drake and then just um, suicide the SI. Oh no, got yeah. the backstab. That is the best draw for him. So suddenly Tom has a bit of. Yeah. A very, very, very small chance. If he, yes. I, I don't really actually know what he could draw because he doesn't oh. have any draw in his deck. And I feel like the Hounds is actually better than the uh, Savannah High Main because well, we it's because we see that Tom has a sap, and it, like well, he doesn't have six mana anyway, so it's just. I oh, feel sorry. Like, yeah. I'm a bit ahead there. I feel like it's just gonna be either quick shot or unleash. Uh, just quick shot because you have hero power next turn. Oh, deadly shot. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, okay, he can unleash, or he can just quick shot and uh, hero power. There's no Lothab in existence anymore. That's going to be game. Tom actually can't draw any cards unless he Thanos and Shadow Strikes. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's going to play out the naked Gadgetson for future turns, but he is already dead. That's true. That was a very, very fast game. And as we know, Hunters can, they just do a lot of damage. And Tom did not have a any of the removals at the start, so... That's just how the matchup can go sometimes, and that's why we were mentioning at the beginning, right? It can be problematic for the mid-range hunter, especially because Sap really just hard counters the high main, but, mm -hmm. you know, when you have that early damage in, it just completely snowballs, and Rogue has no way to recover the damage. If the hunter gets its turn one, its turn two, and turn three, <laughs> its bow, it's pretty unstoppable. Right. I mean, if you think about it, if Face Hunter was in the game still, it would be a hard counter to Rogue. But unfortunately, Face Hunter does, isn't as good against many other decks. 
and Rogue isn't really that common of a class these days. And so, yeah, that's basic. It was basically just being face hunter there. Yeah, exactly. And it worked out perfectly. So, well, that's um, I'm gonna be Throne taking the one point lead. Yep. Has let's see, he has Rogue and he has Druid left over. Yep. I'm just looking forward to the Druid Druid match. <laughs> <laughs> if or we, actually, if we what, get there. What about the Rogue versus Rogue? Let's have that. Right, we could have that. We could have the complete mirror with all the exact same cards. That would be pretty fun. <laughs> yeah, they pretty much brought the same thing, except for um, Throne with the Hunter and uh, Tom with the Shaman. They have slightly different druids. If we do have that mirror match mm -hmm. on the side of Tom, he has no Arcane Giant, one uh, one copy of Nourish, but he has Thanos, Sonaris, Anixia, and obviously Yogg. Right. On the side of Throne, we have uh, two Moonblade portals and one Arcane Giant, and none of the other stuff. No Anixia, no what have you. Yeah, I feel like Tom's Druid is a bit greedier. Right. I wonder who will win that um, matchup. The greedier Druid or the like, more of the normal kind of... It really depends uh, when it starts going into the matchup, because there's... If, you, if Tom can just get into those late game bombs, then obviously he might be ahead, but then there's a huge swing turn from just having the one Arcane Giant. So that is all to say that Yogg will just <laughs> yeah, and I'm, actu I'm actually looking forward to the Moonglaive uh, portals because I didn't see any of those in the other Druid yeah. matches. It can make a pretty big difference. And the thing is, people have almost, like, have very consistently put, for instance, Fire, uh, Fire Lance Portal, <laughs> forgetting the name, Fire Lance <laughs> Portal into the Mage. Mm -hmm. But we're seeing that getting a 6 drop is a lot better than a lot of the 5 drops because so many 5 drops have these right. awkward battle cries that you're not going to get obviously. Yeah. You know, things like a big game hunter, even something like a Kodo, you're not really getting a whole lot out of it. I agree. I do think that the 6 drops have a better pool of minions. Uh, I think there's only like two really bad ones. I, I, I don't quite remember Corrupted the second. Seer and Moat Lurker. Okay, yeah. There. I remember Moat Lurker, but I didn't remember. Oh, yes, it's Corrupted Seer. <laughs> even worse than Moat Lurker. Oh gosh, that's even worse. I remember I got that and I was like, what? <laughs> That's this, a six drop. Is this a six drop? He doesn't even have six sets. I know. It was it was really horrible. Yeah. It feels bad. <laughs> well. And so let's, let's talk about uh, Tom's Shaman. It's a uh, aggro shaman, right? And it, it yep. doesn't have lightning storm. Just the the one maelstrom portal and yep. the one hex. And he, yep. we're, we've been seeing a lot of um, aggro shamans sometimes on the ladder with hex. And I think it's because of the druids, and because they put out the war. Yep, I just got a really loud voice in my ear. Sorry about that. Jumped up for a second. <laughs> yeah, I got that but, too. But uh, yeah, so it looks like we are going into the next game, and we'll see what these players are going to be choosing here. It's going to be the druid for the side of throne, and Tom's going to go ahead with that aggro shaman. Pretty close matchup here, mm -hmm. and the fact that throne doesn't have the arcane giant is going to help him out quite a bit here. It's typically very hard to actually get those out against. Aggro Shaman. Mm -hmm. Actually, uh, Druid has a very hard time against uh, the Aggro Shaman. They just really need to get their uh, <laughs> Innervates and Wild Growths. So uh, I think Throne will be uh, mulliganing a lot of his cards to get that ramp. Right. The, the interesting part about Throne's hand is it's very tempting to just keep a double Wrath and Living Roots, but That's you true. need the ramp as hard as possible. Mm -hmm. The other issue is that when you get the ramp, you want to ramp into Fandral. So, <laughs> That's true. Uh, so, it's, it's a yeah. difficult choice, actually. And okay. I actually do agree with this. You keep one Wrath, you keep one Living Roots, and you want to get the ramp. And you just whatever ramp, you, whatever thing you ramp into, it ends up being fine. Let's pick up the Moonglade portal, which he wants a bit later, but not right now. By the way, I love how Tom60229 got back the Totem Golem and just poker face, like, yep, standard <laughs> Agro Shaman at its finest. Yeah, I mean, like, if you don't have the coin, it's always... Trog turned one, Totem Golem turned two. Yep. <laughs> I love how you say Tom, 60229. I just say Tom. Oh, I guess I can call him Tom. Uh, I think <laughs> for some tournaments he actually did change his name to Tom, but for last calls, for Blizzard standings, he has the same name, so. And it's actually a tough decision because he kind of wants to just go second tunnel Trog into Feral Spirit because. Having those behind a taunt is a really big deal unless your opponent has Wrath. And obviously they can't Wrath both. Mm -hmm. So uh, somewhat tough decision here for Tom. Yeah, I see what for. you mean, though. Because it's like you're thinking about your turn ahead, right? So it's like if you play Totem Golem now, then next turn you're just like hero You could just powering. hero power, yeah, and then go to Tunnel Trog and Feral Spirit the next turn. Yeah. The question is, what is easier for the Druid to deal with, right? A 3-4 right now or two, or a 3 
three and you know potentially something else right here looks like he goes for neither like none of the above <laughs> just goes for the hero power somewhat makes sense as well uh, spell damage would be the worst by far but it's a threat in the future so that's kind of reasonable if he gets the one one that kind of trades for the saplings and it's something on the board to provide damage and the healing totem is great so is the taunt totem so in the end tom takes up 29 showing uh showing us casters you know <laughs> sometimes the you know, the other plays might be better, but uh, looks like it's going to be Wild Growth off the top here for throw, and he's thinking about hitting the uh, healing totem just in case there is a flame tongue totem. But uh, yeah. I see. Yeah. That was interesting. But does go face. Yeah, it was and a tough. Bomb. It was a tough turn for throw, and like he's like, do I deal with this trog now or just get the Wild Growth? But yeah, he, you really need the ramp. And look at the board that Tom has built just by going for the totem on turn two. It was very tempting. It was tempting for us, <laughs> right? Let's be honest here. We're tempting to go for either the totem golem or the tunnel truck. And he goes, you know what? I can totem here. Look at the board he's built. Yeah, it's crazy. Because now when he barrel spirits, oh, it's going to be really dirty. <laughs> All right. Does get the swipe off of the Raven Idol. So Throne doesn't really want to commit to Vile Teacher coin Raven Idol here because he figures he needs the coin in the future. By the way, we have <laughs> the Flamey Faces off the top. Not going to be played this turn. In fact, not going to be played next turn either, but does have a ridiculous curve. It does Tom 60229, and this is looking pretty bad for Throne. Yes. He, he actually needs a mulch in the next couple turns as well, or else he's pretty dead. And you know what? The swipe isn't that great because of the healing totem. Yeah, it's, it's, I wouldn't even call it that great, or I wouldn't even call it not that great. I would call it pretty poor right now. You're yeah. killing one minion and doing not much else, but he still might have to do it. What about coining the Moonglade? I think he's. I think he just wants to go swipe here so that he can go coin Ancient of War. The nightmare scenario is your opponent has Flame Tongue Totem at, at that point, but uh, I think that as Throne, you're so far behind, you need to just cross your fingers and hope your opponent doesn't have the answer. Mm -hmm. And you'd, you'd swipe the truck here. Right? right, just get the damage off the table. Yep. Everything's trading into the Ancient of War anyway. Exactly. And we don't want the truck to grow. We do not want the trog to grow. We do see in the hand of Tom that if he doesn't kill off the trog, that's a 6-3 to the face. That's a just a card to the face. <laughs> it's, uh, this is exactly how you feel when you're playing Druid against Aggro Shaman. They always grow the board really fast, and you well, somehow have to <laughs> pick it up later. <laughs> All right. Well, I was mentioning that he needed to go for a risk with the swipe into coin Ancient of War, but mm -hmm. Throne's going to take a massive risk here and just go for the Violet Teacher. This does make a bit of sense. Tom doesn't want to be facing a board of two twos, essentially, if Throne has, you know, the, the perfect hand. And it makes sense, you know, from for Throne to think that Tom might think that Throne has that sort of crazy hand, but uh, no way, no sort of answers. So... Really nice mind games here by Throne. He says, all right, if I have Throne's Vile Teacher out here, I'm going to have a massive board, Tom, so you have to deal with it. <laughs> it ends up being a four mana heal for five, but you're also killing a minion. So I, I really like this play by Throne just being, because he's so desperate anyway, you might as well go for just a huge risk and hope that your opponent falls for it. There are two plays here. Um, he could Feral and trade his Trog in. Um, he could Lightning bolt he actually has hero power and just trade um, his totem goal. I think he has he has like he had actually like five plays there in my opinion oh, okay. you can just uh, actually just go face then yeah he looks like he's gonna go all face I believe yeah just there's just so much damage that even if Throne managed to make a huge board Tom's like I don't care yeah. I have two threes what are you two twos gonna do actually I think that was the right play too because um you just want to get as much damage in before they just innervate Yogg right 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 or innervate any sort of craziness well, Throne, let's see. If he goes for the coin Ancient of War, he is almost dead on board. There's seven damage through the Ancient of War on board. And we know he would actually just... Wait, hold on. Three, five, seven, nine, eleven. Yeah, he would... If he does go for the coin Ancient of War, even if he innervates hero power, he's actually just dead. Mm, we can he, see that. The swipe probably would have been better then. I mean, just get rid of the troll. Right. Well, in hindsight... And right. this is part of the issue, too, as well. I think if he was playing on ladder, speaking of throne, a lot of players might have fallen for that for that uh, battle teacher. But Tom is smart enough to realize that he needs to just, you know, go a face as, as quickly as possible. Uh, so we did have... Oh, excuse me. I, I made a mistake, actually, with the with the uh, Feral Spurts. Forgot that battle teacher can actually attack. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> yeah. Uh, we have close to lethal here, if not lethal. It's, this... I'm, have you ever seen a trog so big? 
Uh, <laughs> I saw one against me the other day. Yeah, that's going to be lethal there. Yeah. Alright, so guaranteed lethal. Just needed the emails from Portal as well. It's going to be game two going to Tom tying up the series one to one. Yep, could actually swing either way. Both of them are really good players. But as expected, yeah. Uh, the Shaman was most likely going to take that win. You were actually watching behind my shoulder the other day when there was a 9-1 truck hitting my face. I was playing Priest, but which is to be expected. <laughs> <laughs> Typically when you play you Priest, you were playing you Dragon Priest. I was playing Dragon Priest. Mm -hmm. Just copying a deck from VLPS, you know, no big deal. <laughs> actually did okay. Did okay, yeah. For, yeah, like, yeah, it's a good deck. For the rank. <laughs> <laughs> I've been casting a lot, okay? It's not my fault on my 15. <laughs> Anyway, uh, so that this uh, suddenly becomes a best of three here uh, with the Druid and Rogue on the side of Tom and the Rogue and the Druid on this, okay, they're the exact same decks. But uh, on the side of Thorn here, the Rogue is actually the exact same list from both sides. I know I've said it a few times, but it's pretty crazy to think about. And yeah, the Druids are fairly similar as well. The difference being those uh, Moonblade portals and the Arcane Giants as opposed to Scenarius and Anixia. So I'm looking forward to this next match. What do you yep. think? What do you think the uh, the decision making here is? Because it's very it's very weird, right? Because they're both down to their both like their rogues and their druids. Right, and they're both reasonable matchups, right? You don't really too feel too bad going druid against rogue or rogue against druid, mm -hmm. vice versa. So it's kind of like what you feel more comfortable yeah. with. If it were me, I would like to get the rogue out of the way. I feel like it's the harder deck to win. I mean, just use your mental strength. <laughs> You're yeah. like, you might be tired by the end of it. We know that Druid has just been a great deck uh, in this meta so far. So I feel like just getting the Rogue out of the way and then just smooth sailing from there. And then you cure the Rogue and then you lose. <laughs> <laughs> and then you feel bad. But then you just play it again. Oh, sorry. You're, he's done. <laughs> <laughs> I think Patra just lost 3-1 to both of these players. <laughs> Anyway, yeah, so... No, he can play it again. He can play it again. No, he, no, he can play it. I thought you meant that, yeah, he plays it again and then he loses again. And then uh, he's just already lost the series. Now you just keep because, playing Rogue until you win. Or, or you're out of the tournament. One of the two. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for a minute there, you, I just got confused and I thought that was the last match already. That's not... No, well, you can, we can project into the future as far as what they're going to play. It's tough. I mean, I can't, I, I can't even say, like who's going to win. Like, sometimes I have um, good reads, and I'm like, I feel like this person's deck is stronger. But in this case, it's really close. Yeah, and both players have played actually really well up to this point. Obviously, there's been, you know, different lines of play here and there. But, uh, for instance, Tom60229 really showed us the, you know, a really, you know, awesome way to play that last game. Typically, with, you know, with one into two into three, you're like, okay, let's just play that. But he said, you know what? Hero power is going to work out better. And it worked out absolutely amazing for him. Getting to this next game, Tom likes his Druid. Throne likes his Rogue. And we're going to keep Prep here to uh, make sure we get something crazy. So, oh, wow. Yeah, we have Prep on one side, Wild Growth on the other, which I, will win. Did you see that Druid hand, though? Wild Growth into Meyer Keeper, the Dream. And then, of course, you got the Teacher after that with a bunch of spells. It's not bad. Oh, actually, yeah. That's He's actually going to Raven Idol right now. He might pick a Raven Idol off of this or go for the Moonglade Portal. The thing with Rogue is they eventually just want to kill you. I know that's mo true for most decks, but if you can kind of hold on as Druid, you can a lot of times just win the game. So I wouldn't be too surprised to see Moonglade Portal, especially considering the amount of ramp that he has in hand. The thing, the case for Raven Idol is that he goes Wild Growth into uh, the Wild, uh, sorry, Mire Keeper. And then he goes Vile Teacher into the Raven Idol and just gets the extra 1-1 one, one out. So. I guess he's uh, looking to use the Raven Idol again with the Teacher. Yep. Well, that could be his turn 4 play. <laughs> There's so much ramp that's starting to get out of control already, just thinking about it. Well, but I think I like the Mire Keeper on turn 4. Are you thinking about right, right, Teacher I'm Coin? Right, so, he goes, so that was his turn 2 play, then he goes... Uh, Myra Keeper now, and then he goes mm. into his turn four play. This is his turn three play. Yeah, I know. Right, so I guess I'm just like already just moving on with the uh, numbers. Yeah, numbers, yeah, it's gonna be difficult. You. All right, just uh, naked <laughs> SI 70 <laughs> into the Tomb Villager. And Tom has been ramping the last couple turns, has a bit of a lackluster board to show for it, but he does have six mana and the coin on top of it. So let's see how Tom can kind of come back on this board. You don't want to have this snowball before you can really get your gear is running. I like the Drake here. It contests to the uh, Tomb Pillager. 
Right. And then um, use the... He could just start off with a Raven Idol and try to pick up something like a Swipe, or maybe even just a Wrath. That's true. And it, it, there's a lot of decisions to be made here. I honestly wouldn't be surprised to see anything, you know, between Azure, Raven Idol, and Tile Teacher into Raven Idol. And, wow, not even going to Raven Idol. Okay, she's just going to go for even more ramp. This does, his hand is very, very clunky. So this makes sense for him to ramp even more. For people watching at home, it's like, well, did you really need more mana? You're already three ahead, or two ahead with the coin. But, you know, Tom's saying, I have a little bit of time. This Vile Teacher needs to be dealt with. This is basically just heal five right now. And from there, I can really just punish my opponent because I have twice his mana. I feel like he's playing around Eviscerate, huh, also. Um, I mean, Tom always surprises us. He, like, actually doesn't right. ever use well, <laughs> to <yeah>. <laughs> follow <laughs> the moves we're saying. Well, he, he's just playing around, yeah, like like you mentioned, the Azure Drake oh, being dealt with easily good. because it is rogue. You know, there's Shadow Strike, there's Eviscerate, there's a lot of things that yeah. just kill it. There's there's spell damage backstab, for Christ's sake, right, to kill off the Azure Drake. So it was very risky for him to go for the Azure Drake, and so he just goes for the ramp just in case his board is dealt with. Does Ooh. pick up the living roots. This is pretty nice for him. Gonna go with the Raven Idol, obviously, first. And see what he can't pick up here. Swipe. Swipe. Ooh, Innervate is very nice oh, as well. Wow. And he's gonna go ahead and lean back and just and uh, <laughs> think of his options right now. Uh. Alright, so behind this discover option board is a Tomb Pillager and an SI7 agent, so he needs to think of the best way to go ahead and deal with that. It'd be really nice if you could get Innervate and a Swipe, but unfortunately I, you can't. Yeah, yeah, I really like the Swipe, though. I mean, three Swipes in a deck is just great. I mean, we need something to deal with the Gadgetson, the Questing, mm -hmm. Adventurer. Well, Claw can somewhat deal with the board right now a bit better, potentially, depending on what this next thing is, but he needs to, like, make a decision. So he's going to go with the Raven, or excuse me, with the Innervate. Go with the next Raven Idol just as quickly as possible. Doesn't... It does get the... the uh, Moonfire. But, Can't yeah, <laughs> but he actually doesn't run Mal Maligos, so the Moonfire is just there to take out the Tomb Pillager. Right. Yeah, just wants to take it out nice and easy. He retains the Innervate because, again, his hand is somewhat clunky, even though he is already at going uh, onto nine mana next turn. And Conceal off the top for throw. <laughs> this is very tempting for him, and yeah. I think he's Auctioning. just going to go ahead and do it. Definitely. Auctioneer coin. You could even Shadow Strike threat? would be ridiculous here. If he if he attacks, he's thinking about whether how likely it is for him to get a Shadow Strike off the top right here, and so he could conceal first to yeah. get him two draws to do that. Yeah, I but like the thing too. is, if he doesn't pick up the Shadow Strike, uh, he can attack with the SI7 agent anyway. So he's holding on to the SI7. He's just gonna attack base here and just kind of. Um, I mean, if he does pick up the Shadow Strike, he just attacks base with the SI, and he doesn't really care too much that it's being revealed, but having not picked it up, he's just going to go ahead and trade into the Drake because it could possibly deal with the Concealed Gadget. I feel like Thro needs to start um, putting out like some big dudes, like his questing adventure, mm. and uh, it's going to be hard for a druid to, like with, without mulch. Does he run one mulch? Uh, Tom, I believe he does. Yeah, so. Oh, he doesn't have it right now, so it would be really great to just get a big minion on the board soon. Well, Nourish into Scenarius. Don't see that every day. But Tom is a bit desperate here. Doesn't want this Gadgetson to get too much damage into the face. Mm -hmm. That's right. And we all know, you know, rogues run the cold blood. Give me a quest. Oh, here we go. Here's the questing adventure. And now it's time to make that questing adventure grow. Yep, going to start off with the prep into the sap. And... Picks up a backstab that is absolutely huge here for Throne. Gonna lead off with that. Has a couple of cold bloods to uh, draw into his deck and maybe pick up another backstab or an abyss right here to take out the second train. He's actually gonna play the Tomb Pillager. This is actually insane for Throne because mm. this questing adventure is just growing yeah. and growing. Mm. This is a very safe play here from Throne. If he goes for double cold blood and doesn't pick up a way to deal with the train, then he's in a lot of trouble. But he figures this board is extremely hard for Drew to deal with anyway. And there's so many priorities, right? You need to kill the questing, but you also need to kill the Gadgeton, but also the Tomb Pillager is a threat. So, <laughs> yeah, it makes sense for throwing in the end. A lot of players, I feel like, would have gone for the Cold Blood. I certainly was staring at that. And he says, you know what? This board, deal with it. It's actually very tough. Um, so you're going to pick the Azadrick, and do you think he's going to Wrath and draw and kill the Auctioneer? Or yeah. he's going to take... 
take out. Yeah, he has to take out. There's really not much else he can do here. He needs to kill off the guy just in. If he allows that go. guard guy to continue to draw, then he's just going to die. But he might just be dead right now. He's going to Yogg, for sure. Right, but he might die. Yeah, that's true. So let's see. 23 damage is the threshold here. Picks up the prep, uh, which he could use after the Azure Drake potentially. So let's see. How many cards can he actually play here? He can play this entire hand, I think. Uh, it's lethal. It is? Okay. Yeah. So 5 plus 8. It's like tw at least 24. Uh, 13 uh, plus 6 is 19. Wait. No, I think it's I think it's 19. Maybe it's going to be it. like 24 at least. Okay. Caster Math is it's, hard. It's a ton of damage. This is exactly like as soon as you put down this questing, it's going to be over. Especially with uh, the Druid without no mulch. Right. Well, that is going to be it. Looks like he was one over lethal because he could have played prep there, obviously. Or just play the Azure Drake. Has that hero power in the end. And Throne. Very well played. Going to put this series at two games to one in his favor. Tom lets out a sigh. Going to have to come back in the series. Oh, man. No, that's that he's winning. Yeah, I know. I, know. <laughs> I was going to say, like, he looks sad, but he's actually winning the He's game. concentrating. Yep, he's like... That was, that it's, it's intense, you know? Yeah. Being behind that desk, a lot of pressure, lots of people watching you. You have to um, think about every single move carefully. He also might just have a headache because there's all <laughs> this white noise in his ear. It is pretty annoying. <laughs> you, know, you, they, it's, it's, you can't hear anything, right? With their headphones, they can't hear the people around them. Right, but the reason why they can't hear is because they have, they're have blasting mm -hmm. white noise in their ears. Uh. It's, uh, it's pretty annoying. I know you can get a headache from that? Is that from really loud noises? Yes, you can get a headache from very loud noises. That is a thing. I didn't, well, yeah, I just didn't realize that they were, yeah. yeah it's <laughs> Never mind. Okay. Let's moving on. <laughs> All right. Well, we're in good spirits, but those players are obviously pretty nervous up there. They are playing for quite a bit of money and for quite a bit of points in the side of Throne. He needs to win this tournament if he wants to have a chance at last call mm -hmm. and subsequently at a chance for BlizzCon glory. Actually, uh, Throne is doing really well, and uh, he got the rogue out of the way, and yeah. now he can like smooth sailing, like I said, with the druid. Just has to get the. the so the your ramp. strategy, your strategy was correct. Just go for the th rogue, get out of the way, easy peasy. You click the rogue, you win. Pick the druid, now you easy win. I wouldn't say easy peasy with the rogue. <laughs> it just have as soon as you put that questing in, it's done. Usually. So now that he's gotten rid of the rogue, which he was going to win with because you got it out of the way. He's now going with Druid, which is going to be easy because he's now got the rogue out of the way. I hope we see a uh, Druid versus Druid. Right. May Yogg the best versus Yogg. May the best Yogg win. I think you're really just triggering chat right now. I know. <laughs> Chat's like this I, game is all RNG. I mean, I think no they skill involved. I think they secretly like it also. I secretly because like it. I actually openly like it. There's Give me more Yogg. Okay, come on guys. If you're spectating a Yogg battle, it's freaking entertaining. Freaking entertaining. Yep. I agree. Absolutely. And all you do is just like, oh, oh my god. <laughs> I actually cast those games, so I actually say what's happening play by play, but uh, I guess you could. Oh my god. Do you actually count the amount of spells as a caster? You can look at the Arcane Giant. I guess there's only one in this game. Yeah, you, could, you can actually look at the Arcane Giant. And what if the Arcane Giant's not there? Well, you can. You just have a really good memory, and just. He was, uh, you know, he played this card, played this <laughs> spell, but it looks like we're getting into the game. And you're not going to get your wish unless we go to a game five. Going to be the druid here against the rogue on the side of Tom. And my notes are incorrect because that was an arcane giant. And I wrote down zero arcane giants. So you know what? Throne got his uh, ramp. He did get his ramp. Well, we saw a lot of ramp last game. It didn't really work out for Tom. So Very pixelated. Um. <laughs> Malfurion, the, the sick picture of Malfurion has just turned into a, 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 a claw. A paw. Oh my gosh! It, yeah, it's not their hey. face. It's not their uh, hero portrait. Don't it don't make fun their, of don't make fun badges. of our production team, okay? They're, they're trying their hardest. Nah, All right. I liked it. So, <laughs> so throne, throne is a uh, throne has a bit of a you know decision making here as far as the Meyer Keeper and Devout Teacher. It looks like it's just going to be a pass into or excuse me, Tom actually hasn't passed yet. I guess he's thinking about his next turn. But um, oh, that was bizarre. You were thinking he was going to innervate Coin Mire Keeper? No, 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 no. I was just—I thought that was still Tom's turn because the, the end turn button was green. It didn't say enemy turn. Mm. Anyway, so yeah, it's going to be uh, innervate into Mire Keeper into just Battle Teacher without the coin. I, I like that better, a lot better. Save the coin. But, wait, better than what? 
than doing what I said earlier. Remember? Like, innovating coin, the Meyer Keeper. Oh, okay. Well, I just assumed that that wasn't suggested. Anyway. <laughs> that, like, wasn't even an option. But I thought that's what you were considering earlier. Tom is thinking about taking three to do two, which is reasonable because you're trying to kill your opponent because before they do any crazy og stuff. Three um, to the D two. It sounded that's like it sounded like you said that you said your name. He's, D2. He's, he wants. He's thinking about taking three so that he can deal two damage to this base. Ah, uh, deal two. Deal two. Yeah, sorry. Not D two. Not D two. No, he's he doesn't want a D two. Pay attention, that would, class. That would mean he'd be casting. That would be awkward <laughs> to be casting his own match. Anyway. Naked teacher is going to have to do, especially since he has two in his hand. And now Tom, uh, yeah, it says, I think. He doesn't he have fans, so he's really incentivized to just get rid of this foul teacher, whether it mm -hmm. be through sap or, you know, just killing it off. It's tempting to just sap and get mm. the tempo back, uh, but the issue is you know your opponent has coin, so it's it's difficult. But he looks like he's just going to go all in here. Right. And do you think he's even going to use the deadly poison too? Yep. Yeah, just saving up, or just using all his mana here. He might not have the ability to do that later. And since he is just going all in, he doesn't really work. He's not really worried about Gadgetson right now. It's kind of scary because if um, Throne actually had a wrath, right, with his teacher and mm. coin, it would have been yeah nuts. The Tom's just taking a pretty big risk here, and he kind of has to. It's either you're damned if you do, damned if you don't, right? If you go ahead and just kill off the teacher, you're just letting the druid. Uh, you know, have incentive and let them letting them go onto the board, and that would have been. We see that that would have been a way worse situation here for Throne, and hey, looks like class. he's just gonna not even use the mulch. Yeah, he's just gonna play the Vital Teacher. Realizes he has the Moving Blade Portal, so he can just get on the board that way. But he is going to get pretty punished here because Conceal is coming out right now. Oh, that is actually very punishing, and that is um, he's facing lethal. Yeah. What about if he moon? He needs here. a Moonbay portal right now. He goes up to uh, 19. Sunwalker? Nope. All right, he gets <laughs> he gets the card that draws a 10 drop, but he already has a 10 drop in hand, so that's doing nothing. And Tom is just going to keep pushing damage to face. Doesn't really care if his opponent has Yogg, because unless you have Innervate, you can't actually get to that Yogg anyway. And no trades here. Doesn't care. Yeah. About the Vile Teacher because he needs to just finish the game right now. Eviscerate would actually kill Throne, so. Unless he hero powers. Yeah, Throne needs to stay alive right now. And like you mentioned, he he's incentivized to use his hero power because of Eviscerate. And uh, just goes ahead and plays Raven Idol first. Let's have the Living Roots to be able to help him out and the Mulch. Yeah, we can't actually see his options right now, but uh, he's thinking long and hard for the right decision. I. I think, um, what do you think he was he was hoping to find? I guess he didn't really get to uh, he, find what he was looking if for. If he picks up Swipe, he has some reasonable trades. I guess he can't throw in his apprentices into the SI7 agent, so that's a bit unfortunate. Actually, it's so bad that he goes for a second Raven. Now. That's not the place you want to be in. But he does have the mana to, to do so, and immediately picks up Fairways. That's pretty good for his sake. And I think just with the board, he can just trade in. That's actually great. The Foul Rage is um, it's going to help him a lot. Really needs to hurry up, though. Yeah, I guess he can't. Okay, he's going to suicide his teacher after he Feral Rages, I think? Right. This, the teacher's going to die no matter what it yep. trades into because there's too much attack on each side. Did he side. get it? Good, okay. Right. The issue here is that Tom actually picked up Gadgets in Auctioneer last turn, and that works pretty well with coins. <laughs> he got a Lord of Arena. Alright, so instead of going for the Hero Power, goes for the Feral Rage right now, which saves him from a lot of different things here. Shadow Strike is the pickup that's not really useful right now, but he's going to go and find, see if he can find pretty good deals on this Gadgets. And Fan of Knives is uh, going to that's be a probably, sweet pickup. Yeah, that would be probably the best card he picks up right now. Does pick up Conceal, which is pretty nice. He can sap the the uh, six drop and forgetting the name of the card if he so chooses. I think he's going to prep here. And just like hope to get fan. Or I guess he do or doesn't really. He could sap and then try to pick up fan that way. Yeah. S sap the 4 1. 
Right, because Hello. that's almost impossible. Oh, he's gonna face tank it. Okay, yeah, I'm just gonna leave it. Power, just gonna go ahead and leave it. <laughs> Between you know, looking at the game and seeing how low Throne was on health, it just seemed like Tom would, would have been desperate in the situation, but doesn't really uh, need to do that. And Throne picks up Innervate and sits back in his chair, realizing that uh, this could be an option for him. He's counting his spells, but we see how many spells he's played. It's seven. If he plays the, uh, the Innervate into Yogg, it'll be eight. So it looks like he is going to go for the Yogg play because he can easily take 12 damage from this gadget. And here we go. <laughs> We're doing this. Yeah, Tom is already laughing. Oh. Eight spells. Let's see. <laughs> I could hear the crowd outside. Avenging Wrath Hyped. has a very good chance of killing this gadget. Sin. That is great. And does get the gadget in that is absolutely huge. <laughs> Holy Wrath. Let's see where it goes. It's one of the apprentices, not a big deal. Flair is more card draw. <laughs> secret. secret, we do not know. Yeah, Hunter Secret's not too bad either. And the Lightning Bolt hits the Yogg. Yogg very masochistic, obviously. Lock and load coming out, gets the slam. Obviously, he's going to kill his own Ooh, minions there. Tome. Kabbalah's Tome gets mage spells, by the way. And yeah, pretty that's, good Yogg. That's okay, yeah. And Cold Blood came off next, so if Tom still had his gadgets in on the field, he could have potentially dealt a ton of damage this next turn. As it stands, Throne's looking to be in a pretty good spot. By the way, Tom is actually on 15 health because he took an Avenging Wrath mm -hmm. and a, a bit of other damage from the Yogg as well, I believe. So. All of a sudden, Tom is facing a, you know, he could be just dying next turn. <laughs> and the thing is, you don't want to sap the Yogg. Yeah, never want to you sap don't. the Yogg. He also has zero card draw. It's weird to think about because we were just, you know, prepared for getting the best deals everywhere. But he has no card draw in hand right now. And uh, it's just pretty unfortunate. We actually don't know what this secret is. Is it snipe? It is snipe. Oh... Wow. Oh, wait, wait. And he's, he's actually going to. Yeah, he has, he has to sap the Yogg. Thinking about the Ouch. situation, if Throne plays Yogg, that might be Tom's best chance, actually. Yeah, that's gonna, this is going to be fun. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Th Throne just is in a ridiculous position right now. He can go for Spellbender yeah. and prevent a, some damage as well. He can go for Raven Idol into some more healing, potentially. And then he's going to probably have a zero mana arcane giant on the back of it. One of these apprentices can go ahead and trade into the Lord of the Arena. Mm -hmm. Things Thro are looking great for Throne exactly. right now. Exactly. I was just about to say Throne is in the driver's seat right now. And he actually doesn't have to play Yogg. Hmm. He has a ton of cards, many options. Yeah, he needs to pick the best option, though, here. Because, oh, well, I mean, obviously. I but he needs to think, think about what... Because uh, Leroy double cold blood is lethal. Or, excuse me, Leroy cold blood eviscerate because there's already been one cold blood. I feel like it's just... Grow the biggest board that Ooh, you can. Ooh, healing dodge. Wow. Uh, that is going, going to be seal it. There, the deal. Yeah, no way for Tom to come back from this one here. Not enough damage. And he's going to die before he ever gets back on this board. Yeah. Living Roots into the Arcane Giant. Looks like we don't have enough mana. Yeah. All right, okay. Didn't have enough mana for a one mana Arcane Giant, unfortunately. But I still don't see how Tom come, comes it's back from this. It's uh, smooth sailing. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> 19 health feels pretty good when your opponent already went all in. <laughs> Tom's going to stay into this game, though, see if he can't make something happen. A Gadgeton Auctioneer off the top would maybe help him out, but it's just hard to see Throne dropping this one at this point. Yeah. I guess... I mean, I think Throne's pretty much got it right now. It's very, very hard for Tom to come back. Yep. It's just, uh, right. I feel like Throne is just playing around now. <laughs> well, he can do more or less what he wants, right? He, yeah. The, the thing is, last turn he was really concerned because he didn't know the contents of his opponent's hand. But now, now that he's picked up the healing touch, he's not going to die, even if his opponent has the perfect hand. And it just really doesn't matter here. He's just going to go ahead and, you know, build the board again, have a massive situation for Tom to deal with. And this is likely to be conceived right now, unless it's Gadgeton and it is not. Do you know what saved him? The oh. Feral Rage and the Healing. Yeah. And the Yug. <laughs> and the Yug. <laughs> Those three things, yes. Yep. Three so. things that you want to have happen is when your opponent goes all into your face, you have healing mm -hmm. and uh, more healing. And also to clear your opponent's concealed gadget. And those are nice Yuck. things that have happened. But yeah. So, good job to Throne. And he's actually still in the running.
for making the last call. Yeah, still in the running, exactly. Still in the running to win the game. By the way, I'm pretty sure both of them are fluent in Chinese, so they have a pretty easy time <laughs> communicating with each other. A cap of pride right there. Cap of pride, cap of pride <laughs> moment. <laughs> yeah, but like you mentioned, Throne, again, he needs to win this tournament if he wants to qualify for last call, and he's still in a pretty huge situation for him. As far as Tom is concerned, he is in the last call already, having accumulated a lot of points, but still wants to get that pride, that money of winning the Thailand major. Right. And you want to be annoying. You, you don't want the last. Uh, the You're trying to be annoying for the people trying to Just make kick it. out everyone, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. There. Well, anyways, we got some nice highlights for sure coming. Let's go check them out. All right, this is our situation here where Throne actually picked up that healing touch and was able to heal himself out of range of any sort of nonsense. Here we go, heal really and touch himself. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, love, I love that one. Yeah, the <laughs> bit too excessive, but okay. We'll, I we'll made D2 stand. laugh. Anyway, I'll just be a conversion here. <laughs> anyway, so this is the next part where he just seals the game and no draw for Tom really to come back. Even if it was Gadget it would have had to been one heck of a deal. And Throne was able to seal out the game right there. Mm -hmm. And the series. I don't know, it was the only highlight, and uh, oh. it had to be the Yogg. Looks well, like we are going to be finishing up here with this uh, particular set, and uh, next we're going to have our last match of the day, I believe, with mm -hmm. you and TJ. Yep. So, I'm sorry. Oh, Bye, we have to go. <laughs> Guys, so yeah, you heard what D2 just said. Don't go away. It's TJ and I up next, and we are going to be casting the last match of the day.